now on behalf of the EPP group, I call Mr. Palacios from Spain. You have four minutes. Thank you, Chair. Speaking for the EPP, we wish to congratulate the Rapporteur, Mr. Pozzo de Borgo, on this uh, timely endeavor which analyzes the effectiveness of the Brighton Declaration, the European Convention on Human Rights, and what is even more important, it goes even further in respect of what should be the future of the European Court. Yes, at a time when we are about to see the 65th anniversary of the creation of the Court, we think this is the right time to improve this Court, which is the jewel in the crown of this Council of Europe, the body which examines individual applications from individuals against states. And we have to do this to ensure that it may even better uh, play its role play, entrusted to it for protecting human rights. In 2012, when that Brighton Declaration was adopted, and which uh, is the other grounds for this report, the, that court had accumulated more than 151,000 outstanding cases, a figure which is unbearable at a time when each year it uh, hands out 1,157 uh, verdicts and declares inadmissible 90% of applications, more than 50,000. In spite of its uh, already lengthy life, uh, it has therefore demonstrated its efficiency, but it may be the victim of its own success if measures are not taken and ways and means not found to make it more, effectiveness, more effective. This is what is sought through the Brighton Declaration, which was an agreed document, which, while not introducing substantial changes with respect to the criteria for admissibility, did uh, uh, make a major step forward since it laid the basis for reform of the court. And thanks to this declaration, it will now better be able to select cases and be able to reject uh, trivial cases. It is a declaration which calls for the stepping up of dialogue between this Council of Europe and the member states in order to ensure that uh, all of them properly implement the European Convention on Human Rights. And if they do so, this will be the best way of reducing the number of cases reaching the court, since many of the repetitive cases reaching the court take place in countries which have not yet introduced into, the, into, their, into their domestic law. The requisite reforms to adapt that legislation to the Convention on Human Rights or which have not taken on board previous judgments of the court. We need to keep very clearly in mind that 20 percent of the uh, cases come from one single state and 10 of the 47, sta 47 states of this Council of Europe account for 80 percent of applications. All of this is uh, set forth in, the, in this proposed resolution, which also refers to the need for the court to focus on those cases which have not been duly considered at the national level. In other words, when studying cases, one should respect the leeway for interpretation of the national courts, which are those who have best knowledge of local factors and realities. And, uh, there is also the need to apply the principle of subsidiarity. In other words, one should attempt to resolve cases at the local level so that the European Court on Human Rights may focus on the most grave cases of violation of human rights. This report, which I hope will be adopted today in this assembly, should help to recall the Brighton Declaration and to urge all the court and the member states alike to comply uh, without delay with everything set forth therein. It should also aim to be food for thought regarding the long-term future of the European Court on Human Rights, and it should also uh, serve as uh, a basis for creating a forum or think tank with broad, diverse representation and membership to debate on what court citizens wish and need for the protection of their human rights. I repeat my congratulations on your report, Mr. Pozzo de Borgo, and I announce our support for it.